G'day my friends, Marty we're here from Marty's Garden. Now today's video, what I want to do is talk about why I've introduced a portable chicken fence for the penned up area for the girls on my urban homestead here. Yes, it's all about getting productive and doing the best I can for this space here. And I reckon you'll pick up some awesome tips and tricks to put and implement at your place too. Have you ever heard about regenerative agriculture? Well, I'm an agricultural horticulturist by trade, studied agriculture and horticulture at college. Now, I've been right into regenerative practices for many, many years, and it's taken me so long to push it out to the farmers. Basically, that older generation, they're dying now, the newer generation's coming through, and they're very, very interested about it. Now, in regenerative agriculture, what we do is, we actually remove our, stock, remove our stock around under different parts of the land. We heal the land using the stock, fertilize the land using the stock, and then move them to another location. And then later on again, move them back. And so that's one reason why I have this portable fence here. But we'll get into that a little bit further. I wanna show you the fence, and then we'll discuss about how we move it around the yard to get the best benefits for it. Oi, how'd you get out? Did you get out under the fence? That's the first time. Let me out. Oh, here we go. So what I've done is, is I've used the hardwood fence along the back as a part of the penned up area. And I put one of my poles hard up against the fence with another one closer to it. So I can just open it up, stick it back in the ground, walk in, feed the girls, and they're quite happy. And I can get in and out easy and hopefully they can't bust out. The only problem is there's one little gap there because there's not a peg going down, like a tent peg in the ground, to cover that space. But pretty cool. First time I've ever seen one uh, bust out of that little spot there, and she didn't even run off. So on an urban homestead, why is it a good reason to have a portable pen and even a portable coop? Well, you can move them round. And one of the things about chickens and parasites, if you keep everything in the same space, in a small space, you build up parasites in the ground, they get in the chicken, you know, they get worms and things like that. And so there's my little girl there. Oh, peck my finger. <laughs> so, we want to move it round. We want to think like, in agriculture, regenerative agriculture, see? my experience when you have healthy soils you have healthy plants healthy plants you have less pests and pro pest problems and also you get better high-end quality food bigger crops all that type of stuff and at the moment the coop they're in at the moment they're actually underneath my mango tree and they're underneath my guava tree and I'm going to be plant and also there's a stone fruit over in the corner there so they're taking care of that they're digging up the ground like little tractors, moving through, and then I'm throwing a bit of mulch in, they're turning that over. I scatter my seed through the mulch so they turn it over even more when they're hunting for the seed and pooping in there and building up the soil profile. And now I've got heavy clay soils here, so the more organic matter I can get into the profile quickly, the better it will do. And also, you know, they're hunting around, getting little worms, little centipedes. They're cleaning up. I've seen them clean up the snails and the slugs in this area, which has been absolutely brilliant. And once it sort of all sort of browns off, 
um, I will move this whole coop and I'll also move the coop uh, into the summer under the shade of our big palms area here like it's the sort of my rainforesty area and we'll start regenerating that space so I can just make it more beautiful because I want to put orchids and all different types of things in there uh, into the future. We'll let this space grow back and heal and come back with nice grass. They won't be able to get in there and when I feel it's ready to go again we just move them back to that spot. But there's three or four spots I can move them around the yard and they're also like tilling all these weeds because this place was flooded. It wasn't taken care of at all. It is just full of weeds and they're saving me a lot of energy of going around and weeding. But I want to talk about more about that in future videos because weeds can be your friends and I'm pretty sure that content will be really interesting for you guys about restoring your land. You see, I want to bring these agricultural principles to you homesteaders so you can regenerate and heal the land at the same time too. See where you can see the brown mulch and then the green grass off in the end there. Well, the fence line ran along that brown mulch there and I extended it out a few more meters because I wanted to give them more space yet again because they were launching over the fence from the coop. But I also wanted to extend it out because I'm moving slowly south and building out that space. This is the spot that's browned off that will be closed off later on and then I will move the portable coop uh, as well down this way into the shade through the summer. So to have a portable system and to follow this type of practice at your homestead you need a movable coop. The coop needs to move around easily. Now this is a homemade one. The girls actually roost in the back there. There's a lid that flips off. There's a little water container that drips down through and the wheels you flip them up and you move the whole thing around as you change from spot to spot. Now this has a black roof so it's going to go in the shade. I'm going to move that uh, today over to another location because I'm not real happy about the heat. It's warming up and uh, you're going to cook the little bums in there. My biggest problem is they get up on the coop, right? Come on, girl, come on. You watch. And then the less distance they have between here and the fence, they can launch off and get over. So that can be a real problem. So we'll test if they can actually use this today to get over into the next spot. I don't like doing it because it means that I've got to keep an eye and I sort of waste a bit of time, but it's just too hot for them today. And I've got to move this fence out again to give them that room and slowly move away this brown space. So we are, as I said, moving slowly in one direction this way. Hey girls, come in. Say hello. This is brown one. She's a beautiful girl. Say hello brown one. Hey, say hello. Yeah, you talk chicken, don't you? She's a beautiful girl. Come on, on your way. She's not really that good at launching. Mathematics is just the first one that flies off and she's the ringleader. Mathematics. I just want to thank those that helped me get this fence through my buy me a coffee page and also a private deposit. Now we had a bit of extra money put over so that was just really awesome which is helping me launch Marty's Garden into full time which is not an easy feat to do because look obviously YouTube income if you're, you know, 
I'm sort of a small channel. Um, you know, I'm not in the millions like others. Uh, you know, the income's pretty, it's pretty average. But we're plugging along and we're gonna make it happen. Just cause you guys have been so supportive, it really touches my heart to produce more and more content for you guys. Now, if you haven't subscribed already to Marty's Garden, please do so. There's more content coming on the way. We're doing long form, short form content and teaching you how to get more self-sufficient in an urban homestead at home. We're even covering like things like making fertilizers and worm farming and stuff like that. So stay tuned, have a great day, happy everything. We'll see you at the next video slash vlog live show, short video real soon. Bye for now.